Inshallah, uh, this year I will be uh, explaining a chapter from Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, Kitab al-Fitan. This uh, chapter has 28 sub-chapters and uh, has uh, 88 hadiths, uh, 88 narrations that we will be explaining, Inshallah ta'ala. Speaking about the concept of al-Fitan, uh, tests and trials, uh, uh, afflictions uh, that uh, the Muslim Ummah uh, been through and they are going through uh, going through these fitans these days and in the future as well to prepare ourselves for it and then Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah as we all know is a great scholar when it comes to the way he uh, put the hadith the order he put the hadith in and the way he classified the chapters he started with uh, with his book or this chapter by saying Kitabul Fitan and he start the first chapter by saying Babu ma jaa fi qawli Allah ta'ala wattaqu fitnatan la tusibanna alladhina zalamu minkum khassa in surah al-anfal where he said where he said chapter 1 he quoted the verse in surah al-anfal and fear the fitna which affects not in particular those among you who do wrong. And uh, this is a very uh, yeah, any, a great choice uh, from him, rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, why? Because he wanted to tell you that al-fitna and these tests and trials um, and um, afflictions, uh, it doesn't only happen to the a specific group of people in the Muslim Ummah. It happened to the righteous and the wrong and the good doers and the wrong doers. The, the people who are good and the people who are evil. All of them will go through fitan. So don't ever think that you are excluded from it or you uh, protected from it just because you are religious or you are uh, following the sunnah of the Prophet You're still going to be tested. You're still going to, to go through these trials and you need to know about it and to know how to deal with it uh, and that's why he, he followed that by saying وَمَا كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ يُحَذِّرُ مِنَ الْفِتَنِ and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to warn people from fitan and the word يُحَذِّر uh, it has a تشديد in it which is means that the Prophet used to emphasize on this a lot he speaks a lot about the concept of al-fitan. He asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot to protect him from the fitna. That's why part of the Prophet ﷺ dua that he taught us to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitnati al-hayat wa fitnati al-mamat wa fitnati al-masih al-dajjal wa adhab al-nar wa adhab al-fil-qabr. That you say that uh, before you uh, make a taslim in the salah, or according to some scholars, you say it after the uh, salam. But the point here that asking Allah to protect you from fitan, and this is something the Prophet did a lot, and something the Prophet emphasized on it. And it's ironic that I don't see us care much to know about how the Prophet ﷺ warn us from fitan, prepare us for it. Uh, that's why when fitan take place and happen, you see the reaction of the brothers and sisters. They are confused. You don't know how to deal with it. You know, it's uh, and regret it and people flip. Uh, why? Because they never studied re really the, the fiqh of al-fitan. And it, this is a very important fiqh to be studied and knowledge to be uh, known. That's why I choose this chapter. And it's a beautiful chapter. There's so many beautiful ahadith that we'll go uh, through. And inshallah, we will uh, look into the hadith, like, for example, when uh, Imam uh, al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, narrated the hadith, we're going to start with the isnad. And we might even comment on some of the uh, uh, narrators and talk a little bit about them, about their uh, unique things that, that they said or beautiful uh, statement from them, uh, story about them, stories about them. Uh, and that will make the class very entertaining, in my, my opinion, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, 